I wasn't successful in removing the oxygen sensor because if you try to snap the sink, the power connector doesn't go through. That's why I decided to cut the wires and then I will solder the wires back because while the wires are cut, it, I can install the deep socket and remove it. I removed him with the impact gun in less than two seconds. I don't know why they made it like this. For example, the size here is 7 eighths, right? 7 eight. I used the impact gun deep socket 7 eight. It equals to 22 millimeters. While I was trying to remove him like this and hit them with the mullet, I was unsuccessful. The only thing that I did, I a little bit damaged the thread. It's because I only used two angles. While I was trying to use many angles like this, I wasn't able to do it because power connector is too huge and power connector doesn't go through this. It doesn't fit through. So basically what they want us to do during the removal, it doesn't go through and two angles is not enough. That's why decision cut it and then use the solder to solder it back after you removed it some people say that you never do not solder oxygen sensors or something like this because these devices are very sensitive that's why it's like better to buy the new one and plus this oxygen sensor is very old well Maybe they right, but let's give a trial. To solder it back, first of all, all tips should be pasted. So you should put the tips into the paste, the solder paste, the flux. It's called flux. Because the metal is oxidized and it will be a lot harder for the solder to stay on it without flux. So put all eight tips into the flux. Then using the solder, take a little bit of the solder, leave it on a tip and you should coat all the tips with a small amount of solder using your solder kit I did it on the sensor itself and right now I will do the same on the power connector so code all of them. When you're done, this is how it's supposed to be looking. All of them coated. So proceed to connecting them together. First of all, you have to put this uh, heater protection, or your wires will melt. And then you need to start soldering one by one. So when you're done soldering it will look something like this. When you're sure that all connections are tight enough that you properly align everything, use the tape and tape the ends. When you make sure that you isolated them between each other using the dark tape. I recommend you to tape them all together. So this is how it looks when you connect them all together in one big wire and then just simply snap in the heat protector on top. Just simple as this. And you got your well soldered oxygen sensor.
proceed to installation to the new catalyst. During the installation of the new catalyst, I noticed the difference. Uh, the new catalyst have two inputs for the oxygen sensors. One before and another after. My original catalyst have only one oxygen sensor that was after when the smoke is passing by through the catalyst. Then I found out that another oxygen sensor is mounted there. It's already there. So basically I can leave this oxygen sensor intact over there but I have to remove this from here and install it here because I will put my oxygen sensor over there. I removed it and right now I will put it there. And the oxygen sensor itself will go after because what oxygen sensors do? They are monitoring your exhaust after and before and if something is wrong with the operation of catalyst you will get the troubleshooting code since i already have one oxygen sensor at the beginning this oxygen sensor will monitor the smoke before it will enter the catalyst then it will go through i block this hole and this oxygen sensor will monitor the smoke after it will pass by the catalyst itself. All right, the new catalyst is ready to be installed into this Dodge Neon. This is the old gasket that came with this old catalyst. This is the new one that I received. This gasket is very important. Before you will install your new catalyst, make sure that you sand the surface because if there is a small particles of rust which are present the gasket not gonna seal properly that's why the surface should be very smooth use the small millimeter sandpaper to sand all the rust away the first thing that you have to do you have to install the gasket recommend you installing it from the top when you install it and make sure that it's in you have to go underneath the vehicle and put the catalyst. You cannot put him on top, there is not enough space. So go under the vehicle. I don't have any helper to help me. That's why I put him under the vehicle. And right now I can put him in just like this, from the top. So first we go to the bottom, put him like this, and then start installing him. When you will put at least one log nut, don't forget to put this support strut because it's supporting the catalyst the new catalyst is installed I only put him on using on this upper log nut and on second upper log nut I didn't put two log nuts in the bottom because they go through this strut so firstly you have to put this put the mounting bolts to support the catalyst and then this goes after through these holes all together so the, they will be the last you firstly you have to install this piece like a main support for your catalyst